Am I still eating Claudia's birthday cake for breakfast? Yes. Yes, I am. Because it's delicious. Also, apparently, this is the very best type of gluten-free bread that you can get, according to Claudia, who loves it, so... Recommendation. Hi. Hello. Yes, I do look like an elf today. If, by the way, this is your first time seeing this face, hi, I'm Jessica. And if it's not your first time seeing my face, well, I can see the analytics and I know that there are a number of you who watch my videos very often but haven't yet subscribed. You know where that subscribe button is. One of the questions that I'm often asked around the Christmas period when people find out about my religion is, do Quakers celebrate Christmas? Good question. If you're learning about the word Quaker for the very first time, or you want a bit of background before you dive straight into Christmas, then I would suggest that you go and watch some of my Quakerism playlist, which I will leave, obviously, linked in the description down below and also in a card above. And don't worry, I'm, I'm not trying to convert you. Not being allowed to convert other people is kind of about the one rule we have. In short, Quakers are a faith-based group of people committed to our core beliefs of equality, peace, truth and simplicity and working for those things in the here and now. We look for God in ourselves and in the world around us and it is a very modern, ever-evolving religion. Clearly, to be evolving, we must have evolved from somewhere. So yeah, that's what we're getting into today. When Quakerism began in the mid 17th century, 16, 50 something, don't know why I test myself this way. Anywho, when Quakerism began in the mid 17th century, its members did not observe Christmas at all or mark any times and seasons. This was because they believed that in each and every day, all of life is sacred and that ev every day is holy. There's no day that's more holy than any other. And this was to the extent that they followed a scriptural calendar, which sort of rejected the standard English names given to the seven days of the week and the months because they really enjoy confusing people apparently. And their logic was that the original names, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, January, February, March, April, blah, 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 referred to the worship of the sun, the moon, pagan deities, Roman emperors. And instead they said the first day, the second day, the third day. So today, Tuesday the 3rd of December, would only be referred to as the third day of the 12th month. I'm sure that wasn't confusing at all. This was influenced by the Puritan movement who also opposed the celebration of Christmas because it's a festival created by man and not by God, which is fair since they don't technically celebrate Christmas in the Bible. And pretty much all of our festivals are indeed based on pagan practices, so. In the 1800s, Quakers, instead of celebrating Christian festivals, gave money to poor widows, which is admirable. We've moved on since then, though. That made it sound like we don't donate money anymore. We still do that. And most Quakers nowadays do generally follow Christian traditions, even if we hold our very own personal religious philosophies, or we don't consider ourselves to be Christians, because not all Quakers consider themselves to be Christians. Although, that could have a lot to do with just the kind of general anglicization and the dominance of American pop culture. We have trick-or-treating now, which was never a thing before my generation. Movies, they get you, they get you real good. Also, hi, welcome to my vlogmas. So clearly I do enjoy a bit of celebrating, but part of the reason that I went with having an advent calendar this year that's more about just nice things and bits that we can do to make ourselves and others feel happy and connect with both ourselves and, and nature is really coming back to this root of Quaker Christmas. It, as in all things to do with Quakers, there isn't really a straight answer though when it comes to do Quakers, because we all believe slightly different things and we all choose to express those beliefs in slightly different ways. So Quakerism is, we will say, a spectrum of practices, but controversial opinion, Quakerism is founded in Christianity and it's, in my belief, important that we don't swerve away from that. It feels very easy um, 
in popular culture today to just reject that and to reject Christianity. And maybe it doesn't feel like that if you're an atheist, because you would feel like, oh my God, there's religious stuff everywhere. But that may just be because it's not your own belief and it's much easier to see beliefs that are not your own. And it's easier to see specks of other cultures within your own much wider culture because it's yours. And much like your own smell, you can't smell it. Yeah, you can't smell your own Christmas. But um, as a young person who has a religion, I think it is easy and tempting to avoid the actual God bit. And I don't think that we should be allowed to do that. I don't think we should be allowed to call ourselves religious, but detach from the actual religion aspect. I say we as in people who are religious, not necessarily you if you do not believe in a religion. I'm good with whatever you believe in because you do you. Quakerism, no judgment. Anyway, I think it's good to have a lot of opportunity to engage with your own spirituality and your own religious ideas. And I really do enjoy that part of Christmas. So even though I don't go to a Christian church the full year round, I still get very touched by the way that they experience and enjoy Christmas. And it is really interesting seeing how deeply they connect with the religion aspect of it. I think what I'm trying to say is that when I watch Christmas movies and someone goes into a church, that's the bit at which I cry. But yeah, I really enjoy that Christmas gives me an opportunity to connect with my religion more. I think it's enriching and it's lovely to have something that I feel quite deeply be part of the wider culture around me. It's not often that we do that anymore. And FYI, that's why it's crucial that we celebrate festivals important to every person in our community. So we can all share that lovely, warm feeling. So, theological meanings of times of year matter if we're following a spiritual path. And I think, as modern Quakers, we're still including that meaning within our joyful Christmas celebrations. And I think as modern Quakers, if we're still including that meaning within our own joyful Christmas celebrations, then we're respecting our forebearers and we can eat all of the mince pies that we want. And I mean that genuinely. In one of these Vlogmas videos, Claudia and I are actually gonna make some sugar-free, gluten-free mince pies. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to make it happen, but sure. Back to Quakers though. How do we celebrate Christmas? So generally in all festivities, we prefer to be a little subdued. Our Quaker meeting houses, which is like our version of a church, are very plain and only marginally decorated for the festive season. There's always a meeting held on Christmas day, even if that doesn't fall on a Sunday. And it's usually more loose and relaxed, with the young children perhaps performing a song or a play or displaying their artwork at the end of the meeting, which is something I always loved doing when I was a kid because I'm a yellow. So with all Quaker meetings, there are no planned services and there are obviously, we, we don't have a clergy because we don't believe in the hierarchy of people. We all have our own relationship with God. Um, but at Christmas, there are very sweet ministries given, maybe a little lively theology. Oh wait, I just said that not all Quakers have planned meetings, but some Quakers do. It's very difficult talking about Quakerism because every time I'm like, there's this, I also have to be like, but not all Quakers. Hashtag, not all Quakers. So often we will also have a separate candlelit service um, which is very simple and reverent and beautiful. Because um, we love a good vigil, Quakers, especially for peace, peace on earth. We're just out here trying to spread some joy through our belief in equality, peace and justice. It's basically what I try to do every day because peace on earth is relevant all year round. But whilst I do enjoy the sense of the sacred always, I think it is actually, I do find it helpful to have specific markers throughout the year that encourage me to rejoice. And fun point, sustainability um, is actually one of our key tenements as Quakers. And the seasonal change, including the like amount of super pagan greenery it's inserted into the supposedly Christian only holiday. Makes me feel a bit pagan, to be honest. Christmas always makes me feel pagan. I'm like, yes, actually, yes. What a great idea. Why don't I have a tree in my house all year round? Um, yeah, encourages our commitment to the earth, I think Christmas does. A lot of the imagery that we admire at Christmas sort of includes the natural world, like a Christmas tree, robins, deer, holly, 
ivy, snow, crisp leaves, being in the outdoors. When we're enjoying those kind of beautiful parts of nature, it reminds us of how amazing the world is and that we should be determined to make lifestyle changes and campaign for social change that will protect the environment all year round. That's Quakers and Christmas, my thoughts. Again though, it is worth noting that some Quakers really do go the whole hog with the full Christian event to mark the birth of Jesus, with candles, carols, presents and pudding. And there are others who completely ignore Christmas, but give daily witness to their faith as they would on any other day. And me, well, I'm somewhere in the middle, I suppose, enjoying the Christmas celebrations and the traditions that I see around me and have been passed down, but also just marking the religious part of the day in my own special way. And now I must get to work for the rest of the day because I have a to-do list that is pretty darn long. But it's mainly just kind of commu computer stuff like editing some collab videos you pre-filmed for Vlogmas so I don't kill myself by filming every day and editing adorable Christmassy photos, answering emails and arranging slash planning some very exciting videos to come. <gasps> so since we moved house, it's actually been amazing having a dedicated room that Clara and I just kind of work in that's separate from the rest of the house and doesn't make Claudia tear her hair out when she comes home in the evening and our dining room table's covered in work stuff which is very fair I mean she put up with that for the last three years like a very saintly wife only complaining a lot and often Hello and good evening I really hope that you liked today's video it's kind of um, it's really nice actually how Vlogmas kind of gives you the time and space to ruminate on things. I say you, I mean me, gives me the time and space to ruminate on things. Oh, oh my god. So not a lot uh, of exciting stuff happened today that I could vlog because mainly we just sat and wrote stuff and edited stuff and answered emails. <laughs> it's a very exciting life I lead behind the scenes I know. So it's really nice just to be able to have videos where I just think about things and talk about them. I hope you like that. Um, if there are some other things you'd like me to think about deeply, talk about, let me know in the comments. That will be quite interesting. I've just finished writing the first two Christmas cards to go to my Instagram followers. Woo! And I'm very excited to write some more. If you haven't seen it yet, basically every single day of Vlogmas I'm going to be opening the Advent House as I did earlier and inside will be a little message and um, kind of like an everyday act of kindness or just something for you to think about yourself. But really I suppose it's a little kindness that you can do for yourself or for someone else. Then I want you to play along with me and to take that little message over to my Instagram and the corresponding advent outfit picture, today's one looks like this, and right underneath how you have enacted that little message in your day. And I'll choose one of the comments and that person will get sent a personalised Christmas card. I say personalised, I mean they're all the same, they're adorable, it's Claudia and I looking really cute. But I mean I'm going to like write you a Christmas card and send it to you. I can't show you this person's name, but still, data protection. So um, I'm really happy because I, I really like sending Christmas cards and I hope that in receiving the cards it will brighten the days of some of you. Today's message is to think about what Christmas means to you. Um, if Christmas means nothing to you because you don't celebrate Christmas, you could also write that. But go and put it on the photo that, again, is this one? this photo, that one right there, um, comment underneath and I will choose someone to send a card to. And that's it, I'm really tired. But I'll see you in tomorrow's video, which is a collab. Can you guess with who? Mm. Leave it in the comments if you think you can. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah. Oh yeah, I have just finished writing the first two Christmas. I smacked myself in the head. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs>